Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today you're going to be looking at the SLS rocket in the crew configuration. And we are going to be launching three mighty Kerbonauts, that being Jeb, Val, and Bill, out to the Mun Gateway Station and down to the Mun. So this is going to be part three of the Artemis program. And uh, this is where we're gonna be making our first contact with the Mun. We're gonna be landing on the Mun for the first time in the whole series. Pretty exciting video today. Uh, but first, I'm gonna talk about the Ascent. So uh, you're gonna be using the SLS rocket, same one we used in the first part, except this is the crew configuration, the block or the block one. Uh, the configuration shown off in that video was the block 1b or the cargo version of sls or the one the cargo version of block one of sls uh, so basically this version just has a slightly more tapered up uh, upper stage and that is basically all that is a little that has changed and obviously it has the orion crew module as the or the orion command pod as the uh, basically the payload as opposed to you know something else like a uh, space station part but uh Everything else is basically the same. We are going to be doing a pretty standard ascent, if not a little bit steeper, uh, just because we're going to be getting into a 400 by 100 kilometer orbit, and the center stage is going to propel us all the way up to our APWAPS, and then we're going to ditch that, and we're going to open up the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which uses one RL-10 engine to circularize the craft and then get it to TLI, or translunar injection. After that, we are going to be using the Orion service module and command module to slow us down in MUN orbit and dock to the gateway station, uh, which is in that near rectilinear halo orbit. And as you can see right now, we've just uh, finished that burn and we've now staged away the core stage and uh, we can get ready to begin our circularization burn around Kerbin using that interim cryogenic propulsion stage, like I said, which is powered by one RL-10 RL engine, uh, also known as the Poodle. This is a new variant of the Poodle that came with the 1.10 update, uh, which is just a single belt version. So we're going to go to the maneuver node, get that launch escape tower ejected. Good thing we didn't use that. And then we can get time warped out. Uh, solar panels are out, and then we also can get ready to do the burn, which is a pretty easy 43 meters a second burn is done. So we're just going to wait for the MUN to get uh, round to a transfer window. We basically want to be burning at periaps uh, because of the Obertha effect. And then going to be it's about a 650 meters a second burn. Normally it's about 850 meters a second to get out to the MUN, but because of our uh, rather high apoaps, uh, thanks to the core stage, we were able to get there for about 200 less, which is always nice. A little bit of fuel saving there, although you know, we're still spending the same amount of fuel, just not as much on the upper stage. Now, this craft is very much overbuilt. Um, I could have got to the MUN and done everything with just the core, sta core stage and the service module. Uh, not the service module, the uh, RL-10 stage. And that is with the... Um, the core stage and the SRBs being less than half full. So had I filled this thing all the way, we could probably get all the way out to um, where we need to go using just the core stage and SRBs. So that's how, you know, overbuilt a SLS is for the Kerbin system. So that was kind of a fun fact, just kind of show the scale of, of, just how, you know, real life and how small Kerbin really is. Like in real life, the, um, the service module, own, you know, barely has enough delta v to circularize around the mun and then get dock with the gateway station and then do a, a, a burn back to uh, earth we barely use like 35 percent of that and that's with a very inefficient encounter which you guys can see right here i'm doing it very horribly maybe we use about you know maybe 35 percent uh but you know really just <laughs> not great um, rendezvous we go at the station. Uh, you know, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll take that back. I think it's closer to 40%, but you guys can have a look at the Delta V yourself when we get there. Uh, but we're just uh, gonna plan our maneuver and just do a little, one more correction burn. I'm gonna do the correction burns at the RL-10 stage, just because, you know, why not? It has a bunch of fuel. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the burn with the next engine, or the next stage. Uh, which is going to be using one Terrier engine on the service module, which we'll do the rest of our burns with. 
Once you finish our burns and dock the gateway station, we will transfer Jeb, Val, and Bill into the Dynetics Lander, uh, because uh, that is probably the best built lander of the three. And uh, I would use Starship, but Starship has a very special role in the next video, so do stay tuned for that. It'll be part four of Artemis, where Starship will become very, very important. Uh, but for now, we're just going to be using the Dead Index Lander, because we're just going to be simply uh, finding a spot to land and landing. And I thought the Dynetics Lander was uh, the best built. Um, not the really Blue Origin. The Blue Origin one also has way less crew capacity, so we're going to be using the, Dyna the Dynetics one. It is also out of the, you know, it is a very kind of a weird design. I mean, you know, you guys will see. If you don't know which lander I'm referring to, you guys will see when I get there. Uh, it has a weird design. It looks like kind of like a square-ish rectangle. It's really short and weird. Uh, and the Blue Origin, the national team one, actually is what I should call it, is a slightly more conventional lander. Uh, so I thought I'd use that one uh, just because I really like it. It's, it's really cool. So now you can see I'm planning my horrible encounter with the station. As you can see, we're coming in like... 40, 30 degrees inclination relative to the station. So it's going to be about 130 meters a second to slow down uh, around the station, or to match the station's orbit, rather, with our service module. Now, in real life, the Orion command module, I believe, carries four astronauts over to the uh, lunar gateway station, uh, but the command pod in KSP only has enough crew capacity for three Kerbals, though that's a bit of an inaccuracy, but I really don't know what I could have done about that, so I do apologize for that. I could use mods, but I'm not, at least for this series, I'm not going to be using any mods, uh, just because I think it's a fun, you know, it, it's a fun challenge to just try and do things without mods sometimes. Um, granted, I do have Kerbal Engineer Redux and, you know, a bunch of visual mods and all that stuff, but I think that generally doesn't count, because this is more... Because I've had people ask about this. When I say stock in the title, I um, some videos do say that. Um, I'm referring to the fact that the physics and the parts are all stock. Uh, so the visual mods and some other stuff may not be stock, but those uh, don't, don't really affect the gameplay experience, uh, except for maybe visual stimulation. Uh, but uh, putting that tangent aside, we are now slowing down relative to the station. I started my burn a little bit late because I kind of underestimated how underpowered that terrier is. It's not only underpowered, it's actually way overpowered uh, for a stage like this because if you're unaware, uh, vacuum stages or payload stages, like, you know, we're talking about like the dragon thrusters or like, you know, the, com the command module for Apollo, they are all very, very underpowered. Not underpowered because you know, we're not really trying to fight against grav or gravity, against um, the atmosphere or anything. But generally, you know, you have 10, 15 minute burns to do a TLI or a translunar injection burn, which is just the Kerbin to Mun burn, basically. So this thing was way overpowered. Realistically, that 130 meters a second burn would have taken like two, three, four minutes. Uh, like for a Dragon, the deorbit burn took eight minutes. So. It, it, uh, it, it, you know, overpowered, but, you know, underpowered for KSP, except for nuclear stages. Uh, but, you know, those, those are weird. <laughs> uh, I was just kind of missed the entire docking and not talked about it, but you guys, you guys have seen enough docking. Like, the last two videos of, from Artemis have been basically just docking videds. So hopefully you have a general idea about where, how this system works. We're going to be docking with the... Basically, you know, the docking module where you have all the other uh, dock, uh, the other landers docked too. And this command module will be no exception. It looks tiny compared to the landers. Uh, but uh, the Dynamics lander, uh, if you weren't aware, is the uh, the one with those like orange baguette looking fuel tanks mounted radially to them, to to the uh, main structure. And you can see I'm transferring the crew in. I'm transferring the crew that was in the Dynamics lander out to the station because we do need a Kerbal to man the station while Bill, Val, and Jeb are down at the surface. And then we can go ahead and get ready to depart the station as soon as I get those guys all nice and loaded up. And then once we depart the station, which will take place uh, in a few seconds, I just have to actually auto start everything because uh, that was not done in the vehicle <laughs> assembly building, so I had to unfortunately just go through and semi-painstakingly uh, auto strut all the important parts that needed to be auto strut like it didn't auto strut every individual fuel tank but as you can see it had no effect i just auto strutted like those i-beams 
um, those structural beams rather. Actually, they would be I beams, I believe. Um, the main fuel tank in the middle. Uh, actually, you probably guys wouldn't know that, but the way the way those that uh, those fuel tanks are made, there is one Mark One fuel tank in the middle, and then there are a bunch of baguettes radially mounted and clipped in to the tank, which is how I got how I got that look going. So I auto started those, I auto started the engines, uh, auto started those structural panels and the decouplers for the engines or for the radial fuel tank. So that is basically what I did, and then we can get ready to depart when I am done with that. Uh, if you're unaware of how the Artemis program works. Um, if you actually want to learn more everyday astronaut, great video, check it out. Uh, to my point, uh, the way it works is uh, when we did a couple of lander, we're going to be doing a burn at Mun periaps in which you will circularize around the Mun because that you know orbit that the Gateway Station in is in is a very very eccentric orbit. So, you know, our apoapsis and periaps, our apoapsis is much, 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 much higher than the periaps, which you probably saw in the, uh, in the map mode when we were doing our docking and our correction burns. So, we're going to go to our periaps, do a circularization burn. Our periap is at the north pole of the MUN, and you can see the orbit right there. And then we'll do a circularization burn at the periaps, and I just completely missed it, so we'll time warp around one more time and see if I can actually get to it properly. And then we're going to circularize at the North Pole, and then we will be landing on the South Pole of the Mun, or the Moon in real life, is where they're going to be landing. So we'll just get rotated around, and then we can get ready to do our circularization burn right now. Very cheap burn, just because the Mun's gravity is very low. Um, these orbit-changing maneuvers don't tend to cost a lot of delta V, um, and this one was no exception. So we'll just go ahead and do that, and uh, while we do our descent, I will, or get ready for our descent, I will talk about our, the dead Enix lander and why it's cool. First of all, look at it. It looks awesome. Uh, and uh, just another reason I like it um, is because it has, it's mostly reusable. Uh, I say mostly um, because those two radial mounted fuel tanks, actually they're all radially mounted, but the two outermost fuel tanks, they will actually stage away just prior to landing. So you guys will see me do that. So they're the they're they're not reusable, those two outside fuel tanks on each side. So other than that, the main structure is reusable and really the engines are key because the engines are usually the most complicated to make. And you know, some of the crew and certain you know atmospheres and all you know all the you know all the survival stuff for the crew is also pretty difficult but uh, as we do our deorbit bird I just chose this place right here to land uh, which is fairly flat right next to some craters so there's some pretty neat geography nearby or top I don't even know topography should they're all boring <laughs> uh, I'm gonna drop it down to one times speed so this is uh, as you see it getting played in real time uh, because I'm gonna kill off basically all of my horizontal velocity and then get pointed radial out so I can drop my tanks in a just a controlled manner so it doesn't kind of mess things up uh, and I'm not like rocketing them out into like a weird crater or anything uh, but there they go we have a nice safe detachment and then we can watch them just kind of glide down to the bottom I'm keeping it kind of hovered pretty high up because those fuel tanks will make a very big explosion because they are both very high in part count so what you'll see happen is just debris get thrown everywhere we were high enough above the ground when we separated them, so uh, they will not really create that much debris because a lot of the parts just got exploded upon impact. But you can see there's still quite a few markers of debris, so I'm just I just hovered it above the ground a little bit just to make sure there weren't going to be any debris in our landing spot. But uh, now we can start to bring ourselves on to the ground. Just slowly lowering ourselves down, and I forget to lower my landing legs, so I'm like, oh, rip, okay, uh, up again, landing legs down, and then we can slowly bring ourselves down to the surface of the MUN, and we can, for the first time, theoretically, in like 40 years, 50 years, uh, bring humans back to the moon, except um, these are Kerbals, and this is the MUN, and this is not real life. But in Artemis, this will be the big moment, you know, last time I believe was 1973 with Apollo 15, 14, don't quote me, I really should know that, uh, but one of those, and now we're back, and it's the first time we landed people on the South Pole, so that is cool, um, and then I hit EV and I'm like, uh-oh, all hatches are obstructed, I was kind of freaking out for a second, and then realized, oh, 
I have that Mark II lamy can clipped in. So I'll just transfer my cur kerbals there um, because I, they're, they're, that's clipped in to get the aesthetic to look like a door. And I, I think that's pretty good aesthetic, pretty good aesthetic choice. Um, thing that didn't go well uh, is the fact that the uh, the ladder is kind of below the door, so the kerbals it's not really even usable. So they'll just kind of jump down. Uh, looks like Jeb is going to be the first one to step on the mun, and then it's going to be followed by let's see who is going to get. I believe it's Valentina that comes out next. Yep, she's going to come out now. Funny enough, she's the only one who is actually wearing her orange suit. I don't know why Jeb and Bill aren't. You'll see Bill in a second, but oh well. And you can really get a appreciation for those high quality, high resolution MUN textures. Those are clearly 8K textures as you can see right there. Uh, but uh, jokes aside, we have got all of our Kerbals out to the MUN surface. Valentina is going to plant the flag and that will do it for this video. So they are just going to be waiting for Starship to arrive and begin the next phase of development for Artemis. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.